All right, so guys, section 10.4, day two, hyperbola is day two. Just like parabola is day two, just like ellipse is day two, I'm anticipating that we're going to have a lot of success here with hyperbolas day two. Uh, if you remember the kind of the template that we're continuing to follow with these conic sections, day one is all about understanding the physical structure, all the pieces, all that stuff. Um, again, every problem within reason, but most of the, every problem is here's the equation, often in the wrong form, but here's the equation, let's find all the stuff. Now it's flipped. Here's the stuff, let's work back and find the equation. Um, I think that you will all agree that that second scenario, that here's the stuff, find the equation, so long as we know how to build the equations, that's going to feel a little bit easier. Okay? Um, definitely seems like there's less to do because even though we're going to make a bunch of sketches, we're not actually graphing, if that makes any sense. Like that graph is not part of our answer um, with today's stuff. All right? So the goals that we have in mind, guys, these are the same goals, uh, the first four anyway, that, uh, that we had talked about previously. So we'll kind of, you know, save you from that. But I did add this goal in here uh, for number five, uh, specific to day two. Students be able to classify conics from their general equations. So the general equations, that's like what we just did in 30, 31, uh, to where it's not in the standard form. But we want to be able to look at any equation in its general form, not standard form, but general form, and be able to say, oh, yeah, that's a, that, that's a parabola. Or, oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be an ellipse. Okay, we want to be able to do that. Luckily, there's just a few key look-fors uh, that, uh, that are, frankly, going to save us a lot of time. It's going to save us from having to complete the squares and do all the work to get it into standard um, if all that we're merely asked to do, like we will be asked on, uh, on Tuesday's test. If all that we're asked is what type of conic do you have, and that we're going to be able to answer those questions. Okay, so we're going to show you exactly how that works. Uh, so, guys, again, not a lot to really discuss. I just wanted you to have... Uh, maybe easier access to the exact same slide, but there's a lot of good information on this slide uh, that we talked through thoroughly yesterday. Uh, again, the, I, I would probably argue that the most important aspect of this, uh, again, is knowing what does the standard equation for a hyperbola look like, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Those are the two uh, key components here on this slide, but there's a lot of other good information like that secondary equation, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, again, already discussed and talked thoroughly through asymptotes and how they work, how they, uh, how they are built. Uh, we've, I feel like, through our bell work and through the homework uh, discussion, uh, I feel like we've already worked with asymptotes quite a bit today. Uh, so let's just jump directly into the type of question that we're going to see. So example number one, uh, it says that we want to find the standard form of a hyperbola if the vertices are at plus minus four zero and the foci are at plus minus six zero. Okay. So first thing that I want to uh, that I want to point out or, or be very clear about is that you see a graph there, but you could read back through the instructions. Does it say anything about like that we have to graph or anything like that? Not at all. Uh, so again, please understand the reason why I put a graph here is merely I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. Is merely for you know aiding our process. Okay. So I. Just like with, you know, the first time that we had a day two uh, dealing with parabolas, we said that if you just really think hard about these types of things, we could probably figure out if it's horizontal or vertical or, or whatever. But instead of having to think really hard, many times it's simpler just to hey, plot a couple points, and then it becomes obvious. Then we can see it. So here, if we have vertices at plus minus four zero, so negative four zero, positive four zero, I would encourage you to probably get into the habit of labeling these as vertices. Remember, this isn't our actual answer by any stretch. Uh, our foci are at negative and positive 6, 0. So these are foci here and here. Okay. So first thing um, is that we don't have any answers. But what type of hyperbola do we have? It's going to be horizontal. Okay. So if we know now moving forward that we have a horizontal hyperbola, uh, I don't know if this is really going to factor in, but what do we know about the slope of a horizontal hyperbola? Plus minus v over a. Very good. I said maybe that's going to factor in, maybe it won't. We just want to get into the habit of writing that down. The other thing that we want to get into the habit of knowing is that if this is a horizontal hyperbola, think about our template. x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals we know that it's in this order. We know that the x squared term is coming first because it's horizontal. We already claimed that. If we would have said this was vertical, then my uh, denominator, excuse me, my numerators would have been flip-flopped. Okay, so just like 
yesterday stuff, just like the day one. This is really all about can we determine H, K, A, B, and C? Okay. Honestly, do we even need C in this problem? To, to write my equation, are we going to need C? No. I, okay, I have nowhere to plug C in, but you're going to notice that we do have the ability to find C. We don't really have the ability to find B with the information given. So we're going to find C and, and work backwards to find B. Okay. But as far as what do we need to plug in, we need to plug in H, we need to plug in K, we need to plug in A, we need to plug in B. All right? So, again, off to the side, those are the pieces that we want to find. H, K, A, B, and C. Some of them are going to be very obvious. Some of them are not as obvious. So when we go back to that given information, uh, vertices plus minus four is zero, foci plus minus six is zero. Would have been really nice that they given us a center point, which they did not directly do, but indirectly they, they absolutely gave us the center point, didn't they? With our knowledge of where the center point lies, it has to be exactly in between the vertices or exactly in between the foci in either case. We're going to make that determination pretty quickly that our center, uh, I'm trying to think where the best place one is right here, that our center is going to be at the origin of zero, which is great. But what that really means is that H is zero, K is zero. All right, is everybody doing okay? Now, I always forget, what is A? What does that mean? What does that represent? I'm not asking for the number. I'm asking, like, in theory, what is A? The distance from? From the center to a vertex. Can we count boxes or actually even just look at our coordinates? Can we determine that A is 4? Okay. Similarly, what is C? From center to focus, it's going to be 6. C, like, and I definitely wrote that in the wrong spot. Okay. C is able to be found. B is not able to be found with our given information. So are we going to have to use our equation to work backwards? Okay. When I say our equation, we're saying c squared is equal to, and I hyperbola, a squared plus b squared. So c is 6, so 6 squared is going to be 36 equals a is 4, 4 squared is going to be 16 plus b squared, and we have a little equation that we need to solve. So dating back to pre-algebra, we've been solving equations like this for years. When I subtract 16 over, we're going to get 20 is equal to b squared. I'll square rooting both sides. b, we're going to break this down. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and technically, we're going to break that down, root 4, root 5, so 2, root 5. Technically, that's what B is equivalent to. Now, notice that I keep saying technically, you probably understand that I have something up my sleeve here. Are we going to be plugging in 2, root 5 for B here? Is that going to be the smart play? Or, I just erased it, which is kind of dumb. Or is it going to be more beneficial for us to know that, yeah, hey, B squared is 1? Probably a little easier if we just know off to the side what b squared is equivalent to. We already found it. That's, that's precisely what we're going to put in place of the denominator. Okay. Now, the reason why we could have also probably left that as root 20 um, is that nothing that I have up there yet is a final answer. Do we agree with that? I haven't, what's, what's our answer going to be? Yeah, it's going to be the equation. Now, on a test that we take next week, you got to understand that there's going to be a spot. Yes, there's going to be a spot ultimately at the end of the problem that, hey, this is the equation that we created. But along the way, there's going to be a spot for H equals blank, K equals blank, A equals blank. Anytime we have an answer, we have to be in reduced radical form. Does that make sense? So if we were doing this on Tuesday's test, we would have to say, yes, B is equal to 2 root 5. Do we understand that? Do we understand the difference? What I'm trying to say here? All right, so now it's a matter of just filling the blanks. So x minus, we know that h is 0, squared over a is, you know what, I'm just going to not be lazy. How about I just plug everything? x minus, we said that h is 0, squared over a, we said is 4, squared uh, minus, we've got y minus k is also 0, squared over b, technically is 2 root 5, squared, that's going to equal 1. But as we clean this up, we're going to end up with x squared over 4 squared is 16 minus y squared over, we already did the work, we know b squared is 20. Yes, how do we feel about this process? If nothing else, I hope that you can say that it feels familiar. It's the same types of uh, questioning that we were doing with parabolas, then with ellipses, now with hyperbolas. You're going to be given some information to find your pieces and work back to get your equation.
All right, let's try another one. Uh, I definitely wanted to include a problem like uh, like number two. Um, I think it was with the ellipse that we, we struggled with this problem just a little bit. Um, I, I remember working through it in class. And when I say struggle, that's probably a little harsh. Uh, but it did not come as easily. So I wanted to make sure that we included one of these um, in our notes. So uh, we want to find the standard form of a hyperbola if the vertices are at 2, 3, 2, negative 3, and it passes through the point 0, 5. Okay. So first piece of information is that we have vertices at positive 2, 3, positive 2, negative 3. These are my vertices. Okay, great. Uh, what does that tell us? Center is going to be at 2, 0. Perfect. Okay. And that is absolutely something that we are interested in. Knowing center is at 2, 0, that's going to lead us to HJ. But then I also heard you say what, Evan? It's vertical. Very good. So this is vertical. Remember, we want to just get into the habit. We didn't even use it last time. Maybe that'll be the case here. But if we're vertical, my slope is going to be plus or minus A over B. Good. All right. If it's vertical, we know that the template that we're trying to uh, create or fill in, Y minus K squared over A squared minus X minus H squared over B squared. And that's equal to 1. Okay. So just like last time, just like every time, frankly, we're looking for H. K, A, B, and C. Once again, we may not even need C. We'll, we'll see how this kind of plays out. All right, so Emmy told us that the center point was at 2, 0, which tells us that H is 2, K is 0. Very good. All right, uh, if that's the case, just knowing where the vertices are in this, in this center point is, is that going to enable me to find A, B, or C? A. A is the distance from the center to a vertex. So if I'm counting boxes correctly, looks like we are three units away. Very good. All right, now, last problem, they told us the foci, so that got us to C. Or if they would have told us, like, the asymptotes, uh, or the slope of the asymptotes, then we could have figured out B. They didn't do that. Instead, they told us that, hey, by the way, you're going to pass through some random point, 0, 5. So 0, 5. We know that we're hitting this point. So we're saying that we're going to have our sketch looking something, and if we're, there's symmetry involved, which we would expect there to be, but we're saying that it's going to look something like that. It doesn't tell me what B is. I, I can't measure the distance necessarily. I mean, if we knew the foci, we might have been able to, yeah, but what we do have in our back pocket is that any point that falls on the hyperbola is going to be x, y. So a little bit more work than last time. But in order to figure out, you might notice that I'm skipping C. We don't need C in this problem, do we? If we find C, great. But if we don't find C, that's not going to hinder us whatsoever. What we need to do is to look back to our template, and we know now, what can I put in place for Y? We're going through the point 0, 5. We know X is 0, but we know that Y is 5. So as we go back to build, when we write this out, Y minus K, we're going to say Y is 5 minus K is 0 squared over a squared, a is 3, minus x minus h, so x minus 2. We can do better than that. x is how much? 0 minus 2 squared over b. That's the one that we don't know. So b squared, we know that's all going to equal 1. How do we feel about that setup? All that we did, this is a giant substitution problem is what it is. We're subbing in for Y, for K, for A, for X, for H. We would sub in for B if we could, but we don't know B. That's the whole issue. We're trying to find B. So 5 minus 0 is 5. Squared is 25. Over 3 squared is 9. Minus 0 minus 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Over B squared. There's my variable. That equals 1. So what we need to do is we have to start by subtracting 25 ninths over. Uh, is everybody good with me cheating and saying that 1 is really 25 25ths? Okay. Now, when we do this, cancellation is going to occur. We have negative 4 over b squared is equal to, um, I definitely did that. It's not false what I did, it's just stupid. Uh, we should leave that 1 as 9 ninths. Now we have common denominators. I don't care about common numerators. Excuse me. Uh, what is uh, 9 ninths minus 25 ninths? Negative 16 ninths. Now, from here, can we solve? by cross